Welcome to Home Education Matters, the weekly podcast supporting you on your home education journey. Hello and welcome to Home Education Matters Christmas Special. Yes, that's right. I've decided to record a Christmas special this year because I thought that this goes out on Christmas Eve. So let us have a Christmas quiz. And our Christmas quiz, of course, is all about home education. So grab a pen, some paper, your children, your parents, your neighbours, grab the postman, bring them all in and get involved with the Christmas quiz. We have 31 questions for 31 days in December. Not really. I just actually just came up with 31 questions, but let's pretend it was all perfectly planned. So we have 31 questions, all multiple choice, which everybody knows from school. Basically, multiple choice means it's the easy, easy way to get your answers. Right. So 31 questions, all multiple choice, all about home education. Are you ready? Are you steady? Feel free to pause the podcast and get a pen and paper, we are launching in with our first question. What is de-schooling? Is it the process of getting used to education at home and unlearning some of the approaches to education from the school system? That is option A. Is it B, allowing your child to choose their education as they see fit? Is it option C, a systematic nine to five timetable of anti-education policies? A, the process of unlearning some of the learning from school. B, allowing your child to choose their education. Or C, a systematic nine to five timetable of anti-education policies. Question number two. Which is hardest? The IGCSE? Or the GCSE? Not really multiple choice, but there's only two choices. Which is hardest? The IGCSE or the GCSE? Question number three. What is a primary advantage of home education? Is it A. A strict adherence to a standardised curriculum? Is it B. Customization of learning plans based on individual need. Is it C, having a limited access to educational resources? Or is it D, learning advanced skills such as juggling or unicycle riding? I'm not going to be repeating those because they're quite long. Oh, go on then. A, strict adherence to a standardised curriculum. Is it a customization of learning plans based on individual needs? Is it limited access to educational resources? Buy your own textbooks, mate. Or is it learning advanced skills such as juggling or unicycle riding? Question number four. Who do you send a deregistration letter to? Is it A, Father Christmas? Is it B, the local authority? Or is it C, the child's school? Who do you send a deregistration letter to? Is it A, Father Christmas, B, the local authority, or C, the child's school. How are we enjoying our Christmas quiz? Not too hard, right? (laughs) Question number five. How many GCSEs does a child have to sit? Is it A, two maths and English? Is it B, zero? Or is it C, 11? How many GCSEs does a child have to sit? Is it A, 2, maths and English, B, 0, or C, 11? Question number six. How are home educated students typically assessed? Is it A, standardised testing? Is it B, continuous assessment? Is it C, no assessments required? Or is it D, by counting the number of eye rolls during family discussions. How are home educated students typically assessed in the UK? Is it A, standardized testing? Is it B, continuous assessment? 
Is it C, no assessments required? Or is it D, counting the number of eye rolls during family discussions? Question number seven. What does CSA stand for? CSA. Is it compulsory school attendance? Is it compulsory school apathy? Or is it compulsory school age? What does CSA stand for? Is it A, compulsory school attendance? Is it B, compulsory school apathy? Or is it C, compulsory school age? Question number eight. We're rolling along. I hope you've got a drink in your hands. Not hands. Well, maybe one in each hand. But then how would you write the answers? I mean, it's tricky. OK, question eight. Do you lose your EHCP when you home educate? Do you lose your EHCP when you home educate? Answer A, yes. Answer B, no. Answer C, don't know. Is it A, yes. Is it B, no. Is it C? Don't know. Question number nine. What is the legal age at which parents in the UK are required to register their child for home education? What is the legal age at which parents are required to register their child? Is it A, five years old? Is it B, eight years old? Is it C, there is no legal requirement to register? Or is it D, when they can recite the alphabet backwards while knitting hemp blankets? That's right. I mean, the LA is a bit weird. It's possible it is D. So what is the legal age at which parents in the UK are required to register their child for home education? A, five years old. B, eight years old. C, there is no legal requirement. Or D, when they can recite the alphabet backwards while knitting hemp blankets? Always a useful skill. Question 10. A third of the way through, nearly. Unschooling is A. Teaching antisocial stances. No, wait, oops. Teaching anti school stances to your child. It was one or other of them. B. Not doing any learning. C. Allowing your child to decide on their learning journey. Unschooling is A. Teaching antisocial, I mean anti school policies <laughs> to your child. B. Not doing any learning. C. Allowing your child to decide on their learning journey. What is unschooling? I feel like there should be a book called What is Unschooling? Anyway, I might write it. Question number 11. It's a good one, this one. What does the I in IGCSE stand for? Is it A, internet? Is it B, information? Is it C, international? What does the I in IGCSE stand for? A, internet. B, information. C, international. Question 12. We really are a third of the way through now. Question 12. Which of the following is a common misconception about home-educated children? A. They have limited opportunities for socialising. B. They're always academically advanced. C. They follow a rigid daily schedule. D. They communicate exclusively through Minecraft Discord servers. What is a common misconception about home-educated children? I'm laughing at my own jokes. Don't know what that says about me. Which of the following is a common misconception about home-educated children? Is it A, they have limited opportunities for socialising? Is it B, they are always academically advanced? Is it C, they follow a rigid daily schedule? I actually suggested getting a gong to my children the other day. They did not like that idea. D, they communicate exclusively through Minecraft, Di Minecraft Discord servers. That's question 12. Question 13. Who wrote Changing Our Minds? Who wrote Changing Our Minds, the very seminal home education book? Who wrote Changing Our Minds? Was it A, Naomi Fisher? Was it B, Jeremy Fisher? Or was it C, Naomi Wolf? Who wrote Changing Our Minds? Was it A, Naomi Fisher? Was it B, Jeremy Fisher? Or was it C, Naomi Wolf? Question 14. 
What resources are available for home educators? Is it A, textbooks? Is it B, online courses, local homeschooling groups and libraries? Is it C, limited resources because home education is kind of niche? Or is it D, a magic wand and a talking owl? What resources are available to support home educators? Is it A, you only get a textbook, buddy? Is it B, online courses, local home education groups, libraries? Is it C, limited resources because no one's heard of us? Or is it D, a magic wand and a talking owl? Really hope it is D because I'm still waiting for that to arrive. Question number 16, 15. Question number 15. It's always a bad sign when the quiz master can't remember the number of the question. Question number 15. What is the best type of desk to work at? Is it A, a normal sit-down desk? Is it B, one of those funky stand-up desks like you get in hotspot cafes? Or is it C, the floor? What is the best desk to work at? Is it A, a sit-down desk? Is it B, a stand-up desk? Is it C, sitting on the floor? Which has been scientifically proven as the best desk to work at? Okay, question number 16. Halfway through, guys, halfway through. Pause, get a drink. Pause for two days. I don't mind, come back to me. Question number 16. How does the UK accommodate home-educated children who have special educational needs? Isn't that a question? Is it A, there are no provisions for SEN in home education? Is it B, the local authorities may provide additional support and resources? Is it C, SEN children are not allowed to be home educated? Or is it D, SEN students receive personalised work and homemade biscuits delivered by sequin jacketed education officers from the LA? What provision is made for home educated children with special educational needs? Is it A, there are no provisions? Is it B, the local authority can provide additional support and resources? if nagged enough? Is it C, children with SEN aren't allowed to be home educated, don't even try it? Or is it D, SEN students receive personalised homework and homemade biscuits made by the education officers at the local authority, then they put on their sequin jackets and they hand deliver them to you, which actually is not allowed because that's called doorstepping. You don't allow that. But anyway, which is it? Next question. What number am I on? 17. Question 17. Home educating through to A levels is A. Bonkers. B. Difficult. C. Expensive. D. Empowering. Or E. All of the above. Home educating through A levels is A. Bonkers. B. Difficult. C. Expensive. D. Empowering. Or E, all of the above. Question number 18. How many visits are the LA allowed to do to your home every year? A, one. B, zero. C, two. How many visits are the LA allowed to do to your home each year? Sequin jackets or no sequin jackets? Is it A, one visit a year? Is it B, no visits a year? Or is it C, Two visits a year. That is question 19. Question 20. If I've got the numbers wrong, I apologise. Question 20. How do home educated students in the UK typically transition to higher education? This is college or university. So how do home educated children get into college or university? A. They're not allowed in to college or university. B. They have to do online standardised tests. C, through alternative qualifications or sitting their GCSEs. D, by writing their application essays to university in crayon, accompanied by secret code saying, rescue me, I've been locked in the basement for the last 15 years of my life. How do home educated students in the UK typically transition to higher education? A, they're not allowed to go to higher education. B, standardised tests done online. C, alternative qualifications or GCSEs. Or D, 
writing their applications for university in crayon, accompanied by secret code saying, help me, I've been locked in the basement for the last 15 years. <laughs> Watch out. Question 21. Now this is a lovely easy one. Question 21. Home ed is A. Legal. B. Illegal. Or C. Decriminalised. Home education is A. Legal. B. Illegal. Or C. Decriminalised. Decriminalised, of course, means we get to open up cafes and go there and uh, hang out in cafes doing our decriminalised activities. Question 22. What does it mean if you're under the radar? What does it mean if you're under the radar? Does it mean A, you own a submarine? Does it mean B, you're not known to the local authority? Or does it mean C, you don't belong to any home ed Facebook groups? What does it mean if you're under the radar? Does it mean A, you own a submarine? Does it mean B, you're not known to the local authority? Or does it mean C, you don't belong to any home ed Facebook groups? and possibly also own a submarine. Question 23. Which of the following is a common way for home educated families to get together? Is it A, through online forums? Is it B, local home ed groups? Is it C, there is no sense of community among home educators, we're basically antisocial lunatics? Or is it D, sending messages via carrier pigeons because pigeons are cool? So what is the way that home educated families in the UK get together? Is it A, only online? Is it B, through local homeschooling groups? Is it C, there is no sense of community, we're all antisocial? Or is it D, sending messages via carrier pigeons because pigeons are cool? Question 24. This isn't really about home education. It's more about me, 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 me. Question 24. How long has this podcast been going? Is it A, three years? Is it B, one year? Is it C, far too long? Question 24. How long has this podcast been going? Is it A, three years? B, one year? Or C, far too long? Question 25. Which of these is not a home ed approach? Which of these is not a home ed approach? A. Charlotte Mason. B. Amelia Romagna. C. Philippa Outlich. Which of these is not a home ed approach? Is it A. Charlotte Mason? Is it B. Amelia Romagna? Or is it C. Philippa Outlich? There you are, that's going to test you. Have you listened to the podcast on home ed approaches? If you have, you're going to know the answer. Question 25. No, wait, that was question 25. Question 26. Question 26 is, how is Eleanor actually working out the numbers for the questions? No, question 26 is, what educational philosophy often guides parents who choose to home educate? What educational philosophy often guides parents who choose to home educate? Is it A, a strict adherence to traditional learning methods? Is it B, unschooling or child-led learning? Is it C, following the standardised national curriculum? D, the philosophy of learning while you lounge in your pyjamas? Or is it E, all and any of the above? What educational philosophy often guides parents who choose to home educate? A, strict adherence to traditional teaching methods. B, unschooling or child-led learning. C, following a national standardised curriculum. D, the philosophy of learning while you lounge around in your pyjamas, or E, all and any of the above, because we just do it how we want to do it. If that was a bumper sticker, how do home educators do it? Home educators do it however the hell they want to do it. Chapter, I mean, not chapter 27, though it does feel like it has been going on that long. Question 27. Who creates the exam papers? Who creates exam papers? Is it A, the exam centre? Is it B, the exam board? Is it C, the exam institute? Who creates exam papers? Is it A, the exam centre? Is it B, the exam board? Or is it C, the exam institute? Question 28. It's 
the downhill slope to the end. Are we ready? Question 28. What popular type of learning takes place in nature? Is it A, field schools? Is it B, forest schools? Or is it C, mud schools? What popular type of learning takes place in nature? Is it A, field schools? Is it B, forest schools? Or is it C, mud schools? Question 29. Nice tricky one, just to finish up with. What does E-H-E stand for? E-H-E. Does it stand for A, elective home education? B, educational home experience? Or C, educate happily everywhere? What does E-H-E stand for? Is it A, elective home education? Is it B, educational home experience? Or is it C, educate happily everywhere? Question 30. Penultimate question. How are home educated families monitored in the UK to ensure that a suitable education is provided? How are we monitored? Dun, dun, dun. Is it A, regular home inspections by government officials? Is it B, annual standardised testing? Is it C, an annual report submitted to the local authority? Or is it D, a team of undercover teddy bears reporting on the lack of educational progress? How are home educated families monitored to ensure a suitable home education is being provided? Is it A, regular home inspections by the government? Is it B, standardised testing every year? Is it C, an annual report submitted to the LA or is it D, a team of undercover teddy bears reporting on the lack of educational progress and don't scoff, those teddy bears can be very, very strict. Last question, the final question, that's it, we're nearly there. Question 31, for 31 days of December, or just randomly 31 questions, choose whichever works for you. What two words beginning with F do I tend to use to describe the two main benefits of home education? In my eyes, this is testing whether you've been listening to the podcasts. What two words beginning with F do I tend to use to describe what I see as the two main benefits of home education? Is it A, forgiveness and fairness? Is it B, flatulence and fairy dust? Is it C, freedom and flexibility? Is it A, forgiveness and fairness? Is it B, flatulence and fairy dust? Or is it C, freedom and flexibility? What are the two words that I tend to use to describe what I see as the two big benefits of home education amongst all the other many benefits of home education? So that is it. That is the end of our quiz. Now I get to run through the answers. Do you really need the answers? Do you? All right. In case you need the answers, I'm going to run through the answers. So if you haven't finished, Pause now. And if you have finished, get ready for the answers. Now you all get to decide what the winner gets. What does the winner get? If it's just you and you've just been doing the quiz along with me, then you get my extreme applause for being brilliant and for having sat through 31 questions about home education. I feel like that should be the annual report. I really do. If there's a whole bunch of you doing this, you decide what the winner gets. Maybe a t-shirt saying, I rock home ed. Mm, no, okay, maybe not. Maybe a large glass of Prosecco. Mm, no, maybe, maybe a big cup of tea. Either way, you choose what the winner gets. Here are the answers. Question number one, what is de schooling? It was A, the process of unlearning school learning. Question number two, which is harder? IGCSEs or GCSEs? Trick question, they're the same. Question number three, what's a primary advantage of home education? Let's face it, I mean, it could very well be D, unicycle riding, because who doesn't need to know that? But actually, it's just basically, you know, you can just fit your educational plans around individual needs, which was, I think, B. Question number four was, who do you send your DREG letter to? The answer was C, the school. Question number five, how many GCSEs does a child have to sit? The answer was B, zero. Question number six, how are home educated students typically assessed? 
The answer was C, no assessments are required. Although, frankly, the answer D, counting the number of eye rolls, we've all been there. Question number seven, CSA stands for answer C, which was compulsory school age. Question number eight, do you lose your EHCP when you home ed? No, is the answer, which would be no, you do not lose your EHCP when you home educate. Question number nine, what's the legal age at which parents are required to register? The answer is C, there is no legal requirement to register. Or you can do it when you're knitting the hemp blankets. We don't mind. Question number 10, what is unschooling? Unschooling was C, allowing your child to decide on their learning journey. Question 11, what does the I in IGCSE stand for? It's answer number C, which is international. Question number 12, what is a common misconception about home educated children? Well, frankly, they're all there, aren't they? Limited opportunities for socializing, academic, all of them. I'm going to give you a mark for all of them. Did you put communicating exclusively through Minecraft Discord servers? Yeah, I mean, you definitely get a mark for that. But is it a misconception? Not entirely sure. <laughs> Question 13, who wrote Changing Our Minds? It was, of course, A, Naomi Fisher. And check out our amazing podcasts with Naomi Fisher. Question 14, what resources are available to support home educators? The answer is B. Unfortunately, it wasn't the magic wand and the talking owl. It was B, online courses, local home ed groups and libraries and much more, in fact. Question 15, what is the best type of desk to sit at? I mean, what is the best type of desk? It's quite hard to say. What is the best type of desk to work at? The answer is C, sitting on the floor. That's been scientifically proven. The answer was C, sitting on the floor. Question 16. How does the UK accommodate home educated children with special educational needs? The answer realistically is, well, it's probably B in as much as, yes, they can, the LA can provide additional support and resources, but don't even get me started on that one. But let's just say that the answer to that one is B. Next, we have question 17. Home educating through A-levels is... Yes, you guessed it. It's E, all of the above. First thing I taught my children when they have multiple choice questions, if there's, a, if there's an answer that says all of the above, it's almost always that one. Question 18, how many visits are the LA allowed to do to your home each year? The answer was B, zero. They're not allowed to come to your home. Tell them to bugger off. Question, no, don't. I'm not actually recommending that. Okay, question 20. Question 20? What happened to question 19? Okay, I'm not sure what's happened to the numbers, but you can just roll with it. Okay, question question 20. How do home educated students typically transition to higher education higher education? They're not allowed to, they have standardized tests. The answer was C. The answer was they use alternative qualifications, or in fact, they just sit their GCSEs like everybody else. Question 21. Home ed is legal, illegal, decriminalized. The answer was, of course, A legal. Question 22, what does it mean if you're under the radar? It means B, you're not known to the LA. But how many of you put C, you don't belong to any home ed Facebook groups? I feel like we ought to have a term for people who lurk without, without Facebook and give them some sort of medal, actually. Question 23, which of the following is a common way for home educated families to get together? The answer is B, with local home ed groups. Although there's many ways that we get together, aren't there? But let's go for 23. The answer is B, local home ed groups. Question 24. How long has the podcast been going? Who put far too long? Question C. No, the answer was B, only one year. Does it feel a lot longer? Possibly. Question 25. Which of these is not a home ed approach? The answer was C, Philippa Outledge. Don't even know who she is. I just made her up. So question 20, 25. Which is not a home ed approach? Philippa Outlitch. If you want to know more about home ed approaches, we've got a podcast on it. Question 26. What educational philosophy often guides parents? Now, realistically, the answer is E, any of the above. Do it how you like. Get your bumper sticker saying home educators do it the way we want to do it. No, wait, that wasn't it. It was much catchier than that. Question 27. Who creates exam papers? The answer is B, the exam board. Are they bored when they do it? It's possible. Are we bored when we sit them? That's also possible. Question 28. What popular type of learning takes place in nature? The answer is B, forest schools. 
Question 29, what does EHE stand for? The answer is A, elective home education. Question 30, how are home educated families monitored in the UK? The answer is C, submitting an annual report to the local authorities, if asked for. Question 31, the final question, what two words do I tend to use to describe home education? The answer was, of course, flatulence and fairy dust. No, wait, it was actually C, freedom and flexibility. Good Lord. I don't know what happened with the question numbers. Not quite sure what happened with the questions and I don't know what happened with the answers. So I hope you all managed to keep up. Dear God, I hope you had a drink at some point during that exercise. Thank you so much for listening to us all the way through the year. It is, it is, <laughs> running this podcast is an adventure it is sometimes a trial and sometimes a tribulation, but generally it is a privilege to be listened to by all of you amazing home educators. We get thousands of you listening every single week, and I think you are all, every single one of you, awesome. If I was Taylor Swift, I would give you a little light-up bracelet and you could hold it up in the air and I could be like, I can see you all listening to my podcast, and I can, because the stats show me exactly where you are. Well, not exactly. I'm not, like, stalking you or anything. But I tend to, <laughs> I know where you are. I would like to thank you for listening. For the last year, you have been a treat to produce podcasts for, and long may it continue, by which I mean it will continue until summer, which is when I graduate from home education. Yeehaw! Unless I don't, in which case you'll get me for a lot longer. Thank you again. It has been wonderful. Have an amazing 2024 and look out for the next podcast. Goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Home Education Matters podcast. See you at the next one. Have a lovely day. Bye.